Okay, one of the things uh, that we talked about yesterday was how 0.9 repeating was equal to 1. And I know that really, really annoys people even just to see that because it like messes with your conception of how decimals work. All right, so would you agree that that 0.9 repeating starts with a 0.9 and then just has another 9? Couldn't you think of that as adding 0.09 to it? Yeah. And then couldn't you think of that next one as adding 0.009? Okay, guys, don't talk. Thank you. So, 0.9 repeating is really an infinite series, isn't it? It's a really a, a series of numbers that are being added up. And it's not adding the same thing each time. Right? So it's definitely not arithmetic. Is it geometric? All right. I'm going to pause for a second while you discuss that with the person next to you. Is this a geometric series? Pause. Okay. So, it's definitely not an arithmetic because you're not adding the same thing each time. Okay. Is it a geometric? What do you guys think? You know like so? Why not? Yes? Multiply by, so a multiply by would be the logical thing. We've got to multiply by something each time to get from here to here. What would we have the amount be? Multiply by point 0.1? Yeah. Isn't it just multiplying by point 0.1 each time? Yeah. All right. You're multiplying it Are you adding and adding it? Okay, so... So you're arguing, well, no, you're not. Yes, you're multiplying by something, but then you're adding that to the total. But isn't that what a series is? A series is just where you sum them all up. That's what the whole like sum symbol means, right? Otherwise, if you're going to argue that it's not because you add them, well, then any time we do a summation, then it can't be. It's just that whether it's a geometric sequence of numbers or an arithmetic sequence of numbers. Either way, they can get added up. All right. All right. So, it's not, that doesn't like, disqualify this. Uh, so, all right. So, then that if this is, then when can you add them up? Not every geometric series can be added up. So, let me give you one. Here's a geometric series. Uh, uh, 2 times 5 to the n minus 1 from 1 to 4. Can that one be added up? Yeah. yeah, because it's limited to how many terms? Four terms. Would everybody, just for the practice of it, please find the four terms. And then the summation symbol does mean to add them all up. So You don't have to actually physically add them all up, but just write down the, what the four terms are so that you could have added them up if you wanted to. Pausing. Okay, check with the kid next to you and see if they have the same four terms as you have. Okay. So I had a debate going on in one group about should you use the formula or not? Well, is there a formula for this? Yes, there is. Okay. And you should be able to, somebody anyway, should be able to recall the right formula that adds up a bunch of geometrics. Anybody, can anybody be, I can be it if I have to be, but I'd rather have a kid be the formula sheet. You, I think because I've been calling on you a dramatic amount, I'd like to see if anybody else knows, which is awesome that you do know. Nobody else got that memorized? Okay, go ahead and try it. A for amount. Okay, or I think you started with A sub N, which would be the sum. But I agree. Good. I was hoping I hadn't heard that. And then it's equal to A times, or it could be A sub zero. And then you were going good so far, so let's try it. One. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> it was close. N minus. 
Doesn't there have to be an, R, an N in there somewhere? Hint? R of N. R of N. R of N? What does that mean? You mean like this? No. The That's what R of N would mean. Power. Oh, R to the power of N. Now you're on it, and then finish it. One yes. Okay, there is the formula you could have used to add these up. But then the other person in the group said, well, that's dumb. There's only four numbers. I could just do it that way. And they're both right. Okay. So, what were the four numbers? Dice of Destiny, which group should I call on? This is row one, second person. That'd be you. What did you guys get? Two, ten, fifty, and what? Two, fifty. Okay, awesome. So, it is pretty quick. Once you've got the four terms, it is pretty quick to just add them up. Okay, but if we had to, how would we use this formula to do it? What would the A be? Two. What would the R be? RBs is a place where you get lots of meat. No, it's not that. What's RB? Five. Five. What would R be? Five. Five. And how about N? Four. Quattro. And that would figure out the sum of the first four terms of this sequence. What ought it add up to? All right. 300, 10, 11, 12. 312, right? All right. So does it actually make 312? Well, let's find out. 2 times 1 minus, what is 5 to the fourth? Ew. That's gross. 6 what? 625, I think you're right. All over one minus five is negative four. Then I can do a little canceling. Can factor it, you should. That's negative two times two. Two's cancel. So it's that, which is negative 624 divided by negative two. I can do that. Split that in half. 312. Look at that at work. <laughs> That's true. But it's great practice for the test because... What if I said, you've got n and 6n minus 5, and it was a geometric? What is the sum of the first three terms? n's the first term. 6n minus 5 is the second term. What is the sum of the first three terms? And don't do it the easy way, which is just to find the third term and then add them all up. I know it would work. It won't work on the test. That is a good question. It was in the context of geometrics, and, but I never actually said that. So it is a geometric, yes. Not an arithmetic, it's a geometric. But how are you supposed to know what it multiplied by? I know some people do totally know what to do here, and others are lost. How do you figure what they multiply by? Raise your hand if you know. I just want to see how many people know. That's why I'm doing this problem, because there's only six hands up. All right. WG, how do you find out what they multiplied by? So that divided by that. Yes. When you go back to simpler numbers like 2, and then it doubled to 4, and then it doubled to 8, you take that divided by that, and you take that divided by that, and you keep getting two, right? So, you should be able to divide that, and you'll know what your R is. In case you need a formula sheet, here I'll be your formula sheet for this one. Times one minus, I should really say the whole formula. All right, pause for a second while you figure out the first, the sum of the first three geometric terms here. Okay, let's see if you've made any progress. So what was A? Oh, come on, what was A? What was the first term? N. N times, and then what was our, well, one minus is still one minus, right? What was our R? Well, you divided... 6n minus 5 over n. And that probably can't be simplified anymore. At least I can't think of a way. So I got to go, in parentheses, 
six, oh, better make this a little bigger, 6n minus 5 over n to the, what? We have three terms, so to the third. All over 1 minus the same exact thing, 6n minus 5 over n. Now, could you get an answer that doesn't have n in it? No. No, the answer will have n in it. It's just, could you simplify it down some more? Yeah. Am I going to make you simplify that all the way? Absolutely not. Okay. What, what would be an example of something I would expect you to do? I would expect you to be able to add those, as in use a common denominator, to be able to add those. Okay. Now, because this is cubed, that makes it a little rough to actually multiply all the way out. So I probably wouldn't make you simplify that part further. But do you get how you are still expected to do that? Like here, just make sure you haven't gotten all rusty on common denominators. Would you please add that together? Get a common denominator for it and add it together. And then do you get those fractions over other fractions? And you need to know that that means flip and multiply. Okay, so there are some simplifications we would expect. n minus 6 n would be negative 5 n minus 5 all over n. And if you can factor it, you should. So you have a negative 5 comes out, n plus 1 all over n. That's in your answer. It isn't the answer. Yes? Yep. Did I have a, not have a negative there? Oh, you got me. That's the most common mistake. I forgot to put parentheses in. They're implied, and I forgot to put them. Nice call. So that makes negative 6n plus 5. That should be a plus 5. And then when I factor out the negative, that'll be a minus 1. Very nice. You got me on the parentheses deal. And it happens to kids all the time. And I'm usually it doesn't happen to me on that. I make plenty of mistakes. But I usually know to look for that one. And it's because I got lazy about my parentheses. Don't do the same. Okay. So I want to talk again about how to get out the door. So imagine for a moment that you are uh, having uh, some kind of celebrations over the holidays and, and you and Uncle Larry end up sitting on the couch and he's saying, so what's, what you've been learning at uh, school lately in math? And you'll be like, well, adding up infinite series of geometric terms. Like, for example, like you could add the challenge of how to get out the door. Can you describe it again? If I'm eight feet from the door, what, why does this have to do with what we've been learning? To keep cutting it in half. Yeah, the simplest one is go cut it in half, right? So if it's eight feet to the door, don't you have to go halfway first? So that's four. Plus, you'd have to go half of that, which is two. And then wouldn't that, wouldn't that just be an infinite thing that would never actually get there? And no, it, we know it adds up to a finite thing. So there was a rule for that. S sub infinity is equal to, uh, who can be the formula sheet on this one? I'm hoping you all know this one. This is a pretty easy one. Try to pull it up from memory banks. What was that sum for infinite geometrics when... You've got a decimal for r. And I should say something between 0 and 1. Mm -hmm. Pretty sure it's a over 1 minus r. Raise your hand if you had the same thing. All right. Now, I can prove it, that it's right or that it's not right. Do you guys remember the one for eight feet from the door, because I was standing here when I first said it. Okay, so if I'm eight feet from the door, then what's it going to all add up to? Eight. eight. To get to the door, it'll add up to eight. And what's the first term? Four, because you go four feet first. And then what would the next term be? Two. And the next term would be? And the next term would be? And then it would just keep going like that to infinity, and yet it adds up to a perfect thing, which is eight. 
see if that one actually does. When you use this formula, does it really add up to 8? So, did you get that A was 4 because we started with the first, the first progress towards the door was 4 and then 1 minus R, well what is R? That divided by that is a half. Do you remember me saying that R needed to be between 0 and 1? All right. Now we tried some negative numbers. We were like, could you have like negative 1? And then it, it oscillated back and forth so R equals negative 1. Let's talk about that for a second. By the way, the answer for this one, when you simplify it down, is 8. So yes, we're doing it right. All right. So what happens if it starts with 4, but then you use r is negative 1? Everybody write out the first few terms and understand this isn't an illegal infinite. It's just an infinite that we can't find the sum of. All right, so multiply by negative 1, you get negative 4. Multiply by negative 1, you get 4. Multiply by negative 1, you get negative 4. And so then you'd be like, well, how am I supposed to add that all up? Uh, and it's what the answer would be would totally depend on if you went one more term. You know what I mean? All right, so my question is, I know negative 1 won't work, but is there any way that that same formula could work when r is negative a half. Let's start with 4 again and use r equals negative a half and see if you think you can add up a sum, an infinite number of terms like this, just like we did before. Because it's a fraction still, it just happens to be a negative fraction. All right, so. Just to make sure you're not like too far off here, do you get we're multiplying by negative a half so it's negative two. We're multiplying by a negative a half and so it's positive one. Okay. So the question is, can we use that formula, but only if we use R's that are between zero and negative one, like like negative a half. Do you think it'll work or not? Alright. So I want you to piece together your argument for whether you think it does or whether you think it doesn't. Now, don't assume, because I said yesterday it has to be between 0 and 1. Okay? Don't, don't use that as the basis for your argument. I want you to think it through. Think about if you feel like this actually works or not. I'd love to hear some people talking about it, and then we'll have a spirited debate, because I think there's going to be people on both sides of this. Okay, I'm going to give you a moment now to talk to the person sitting next to you, the person I grouped you with. Do you think the formula would work for a negative fraction? Okay. So do you think that it works or do you think it won't work? So if you think it works, then you should be able to say, well, S sub infinity should be A over 1 minus R. Well, just take, just play with it for a minute and see what do you think it would add up to then? If, if a person were to tell you that, hey, I think it works, and, and well, then they have to be able to tell you what the answer was. All right, so figure out, just for a moment, act like it would work. What would the answer be? And then that might help you decide whether you like that answer or not, and therefore whether you think it works or not. This might change some opinions on if you think it works or not. Okay. If we just put the numbers in, we have 4 over 1 minus, well, what is the r? We said it was a negative half, negative 1 half, and that's really like 4 over 1 plus a half, which is 3 over 2, 
also known as 1.5. And then that's 4 times 2 over 3, and that's 8 thirds, which is about 2 and 2 thirds. This is what it would add up to. Do you feel like that, did that change anybody's mind about whether they think it works or not? All right, how many of you think that it works? Two people are going on record. Oh, you think you might you might think it works? All right, sounds like person is struggling with you thought it didn't work, but now maybe you think maybe it does work. Okay, so what do you think? I feel like it works. So you're taking context of why are we even talking about it if it does it if it doesn't work? Okay, yeah, that's a that's a decent argument. All right, so three or four people were willing to say they thought maybe this worked. All right, so uh, does anybody have an argument for why they think it might work? Tell me, wait, tell me all this. She wants to tell somebody, but not me. So. That's what she said. We're not going to <laughs> doing those. Okay, so does anybody have one? And no, nobody has an argument? Because I could tell you an argument from last hour, but yes. Can I say when I'm like... Yeah, just you can process. Even why I don't know anyone, so 4 minus 2 is 2 plus 1 is 3. So you're going to just keep... You got these two and you said those two make 2. I agree with that. One and then this one is one half, but careful, it's negative a half, yeah. Okay. And then what, what, tell me more about those two. So you're adding those together and that gives you 0.5. You and another really smart kid from last hour had the same argument, so keep going. Okay, what's next? We're multiplying by negative a half, so it'd be positive one fourth. And then what's the next term? And then one eighth, negative one eighth. Negative one eighth. And what would those two add up to? Um, one eighth. Wait. This is the two eighths. Would you agree with that? Two eighths minus one eighth would be one eighth, right? All right. So then you've established that when you add up clumps of terms like that, all of a sudden it looks like it's just a regular one where it goes down each time. So then what's the R of your, like, double terms? What's going from here to here? What's the R? Times by, times by one-fourth. Yeah. And then this one would be times by one-fourth. Hmm. Pretty good argument, and it's right. Cause here's the. It's good to be able to change your mind. I I, I like. Uh, uh, there was a famous argument. There's a famous argument in the uh, in the government uh, between a couple people, and one person was saying, "Well, when the facts change, I change my opinion. What do you do?" I kind of like that. So if the facts change, well, then i got to change my opinion. I can't just stick to my opinion because that's what I said. <laughs> okay, you're right. All right, so here is something that's kind of important. When the absolute value of R is less than 1, what does that mean? That means R could be negative as long as it's between 0 and 1. So in other words, it can be negative fractions, and it'll still work. All right. Another kid said another argument, which I kind of liked. Imagine that it was on the way out the door again. So we start with that whole thing, and we say, OK, so then I take four steps, and then he equated the positive and negative. To think about it. Yeah, like four steps towards the door. And then what was the next term after that? And then two steps back. So here's four steps towards the door. And then here's two steps back. But then you'd go, and then back. And then I keep zeroing in on this little spot on the floor, like right here. And then that's where my answer is. See what I'm saying? Yeah, I heard you guys talking about zeroing in on a spot. That's exactly right. So 
So that was another good way to think of it. If you're zeroing in on a spot. Oh, jeez. All right. So anyway, so bottom line, if we talk about this slide, is this a fair way to summarize it, that it's between negative 1 and 1 with a comma and brackets? It can't be both of those, right? Because this one says less than 1, and that one says equal to 1. Let's just explore 1 for just a second. So if we just have an R of 1, our 4 would be 4, and then 4, and then 4, and then 4. Do you really feel like you can add that up to an exact number? So no, R equals 1 can't be right. So then I agree. This can't be right. And is there something else? Yes. Ooh, I like it because there we go. Can't have a zero in the denominator. All right. And then there's another flaw. Besides the fact that negative one also has a bracket on it there, but what else? Isn't, isn't there something else by saying this? Isn't there something else between besides negative one and one? Well, let's explore r equals zero at least. We should think about it. What if r equals zero? Will this formula work if r equals zero? If r equals zero. Well, we can just look at this part and say, well, zero is less than one, so that doesn't that's not a problem. But what about what about actually this formula? Can I put a zero there? So then it's just a. Does it make sense that it would be just a? So we start with 4, and then we use an r of 0. What's the next term going to be? In the next term? Etc. So wouldn't it add up to 4? Yeah, so it does work for 0, but it's kind of a lame example, but it still works. Okay, so this formula works anywhere between here and here. All right, good enough. Now, no? I, I, I'm saying it can't be the bracket, so I, we had to change these parentheses, but between negative 1 and 1. Yeah. Okay. So you now uh, have got almost every formula that you would need for the test. Uh, and today's problems are just a little deeper in the whole decreasing, because you're multiplying by a decimal, uh, geometrics, which can add up to, a, to an exact number. And the title of it actually has to do with repeating decimals. So there's some of you that know this and some of you don't, so I need to talk it through for a second. If I have 0.73 repeating, don't say it. Write down what you think the fraction is. Some of you are going to know this and some of you aren't. Compare it with the kid next to you. Maybe you'll need to be reminded. Did you get 73 over 99? You were right. Okay, good. Then couldn't this be thought of as us adding up a geometric series because we're adding up 0.73, regular 0.73, plus 0 0.0073, plus 0 0.000073, and then we just keep doing that forever? So, should we be able to do it? If it's r is less than 1, we should be able to do it. Don't you go anywhere. All right. You also want to write down what your homework is. All right. So, your homework. Find the problem in the homework that has a trout on it. Please find your homework, and I'm not talking about other things right now. There it is. See this one in your homework? The trout problem? You're doing the trout plus the page above that. This yellow page and the trout. All right, and that's all I have for you for today. If you're not going to be here tomorrow, watch the video to see what we did.